Huh. Hey guys, um, so I don't know if I did any video on this before or not. I know I've had several lap steals from this one guy in and um, so doing the same thing. This is a Supra. Uh, I think the other one that I did this similar thing to uh, was an, was uh, called Airline. I don't know if I've done any. I've probably recorded videos. I don't know if I've actually posted them yet, so we'll see. Uh, so this is the uh, Supra lap steel. Um, the unique thing about this one, for those of you guys that uh, I know from uh, Guitar Attack uh, over um, website form um, John Williams uh, winds the pickups that I use in my custom guitars uh, he has been the last few of them and um, he um, he was gracious enough to rewind the pickup for the Supra it uh, it was dead it didn't read anything I took it apart I tried to tried to uh, pull enough wire off of it to get it find out where the dead spot was and uh, I, found out that I was in over my head on that one. I just kept peeling wire and by the time I got quite a bit of it peeled off of there I thought well if it's <laughs> I can't hook it up if I don't have more wire than this on the bobbin. So uh, so John Williams over at Guitar Attack um, and uh, he took care of that for my client actually I connected them and they he shipped it over to John and, and took care of that. So uh, I'm just going to put it back together. Um, I just metered it. I'll show you how to meter uh, a pickup just in case you haven't done that. And um, so I got 5.4K or something right around there. And uh, just show you what I did do. Sorry, I'm not looking at you. I'm twisting a wire here. I have moved the camera around and zoom in down here. And there we are. And there's the pickup. And so let's go on in and try to rearrange things again. All right, there we go. Uh, so I just have this little digital meter. I just flip it over to the ohm setting and I went to the 20K or 20,000 ohm setting. And, uh, and then all I'm gonna do, in this particular pickup, the plate, uh, let's see if I can, I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not. In this particular pickup, the plate is what is, is this is the ground, okay? So um, the ground, when you put the pot into the metal plate, you get you get ground. And then there's a screw that pokes through here that holds the ground wire on. So I'm just going to touch that because I know it's where'd it go? There it is. Um, so from the other side of the, I wouldn't have known that had I not taken this thing apart. But so we still, yeah. So grounding one end and then just holding on to the other end on the lead coming out of the the pickup. Now there's just one lead on this coming out. Uh, so 5.3 is what I'm reading right now. You can see that. So uh, that's what this pickup's reading. That's ought to be really great for this little lap steel. I'm um, now I'm kind of excited. Um, to hear what this is going to sound like. Not that I can play a lap, but all right, let's back out a little bit. So um, I'm just there again. I think I'm working on this concept of just kind of saying what's going to happen and then maybe uh, fast forwarding through it or skipping it all together. So what I did to this, this particular thing was the last one, the uh, airline, I actually cut a little because I, I didn't realize I had this around. And the standard uh, square plate, like on a, a Gibson, doesn't fit. It's not. It's too wide for the edge of this guitar. So I cut a little plastic one out out of a piece of pickguard material and, and did this. These come with a cable that just sticks out of this little crack or notch here. I don't. Um, both of these guitars came to me with very short pieces of cable on them, and uh, so. He wanted to take the cable uh, out and put a jack in. This this one I was able to find one of these football shaped uh, jack plates and use it 
just drill through the side and come in that way. So um, I had done that. I had put this thing together and then found out it didn't work. So um, going to do quite simply is reinstall the, uh, the little dime pot in here. And uh, like I mentioned before, this is already grounded. Uh, the pickup's grounded in the plate, so when you put the pot in, you're uh, grounding. You're grounding the pot, and uh, basically the system. The only thing that's not grounded then is the cent or the uh, ground sleeve on the on the cable going out, and so that has to be grounded to the top of the pot. And I'm just going to look at this and decide which way I want all this stuff facing. If I have enough room, go back there with it. I think I'm going to turn it around and just go like that. All right. I have the overpriced. Uh, everybody complains about buying stuff like this from Steamac. Um, I think they made my life easier. So I'm all for it. It's T handle um, nut drivers. Um, so that's in. I'm going to run the ground wire from the output jack through this uh, number three lug over here on the right side looking at it from this direction and I'll try this again alright so um, ground wire is going to go through this lug and then to the top of the pot ground that so that will take all of this ground everything here is grounded and take it through to the uh, sleeve on the cable. The white wire to the hot on the cable or output jack is going to go to the center lug and then if I can get into the screen and then the wire from the pickup is just going to go into the first lug on the pickup. Alright so I'm going to do that. You've seen solder happen before and then I'm just going to uh, there's no tone circuit. This is a really, really simple circuit. You got, you got a ground, you got uh, pickup in, and then you got or signal in, and then you got signal out over on this in the middle lug. So it's a very simple circuit. Um, in turn, once that's all soldered together, um, just flip it over and screw it down, and I'll bring you back in probably right after I get it soldered up. Make sure that these wires aren't in the way of the jack coming in over here. Let's 
So I'm attempting to bend them in such a way that that goes together. Okay. Feels like I'm hanging up on that pot. So I'm going to rotate. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this thing around the other way. down. Cool. Alright, so what did I do with those? I uh, picked up some screws while I was at work today uh, because the screws that were in this thing were mismatched. Widen you out again. They were mismatched and rusty and just basically crappy looking. They're going to go in the trash. Um, they, they, you know, a couple of them might have been original, but it wasn't like they all were. Well, all right. Now, I'm going to unplug my solder and iron. stainless steel uh, stove stove head oval head uh, there's another one of those things like spade bits or butterfly bits it's all I don't know if it's regional I I was okay trained that that could just be the the, the crux of the problem with uh, calling things by odd names. So, um, oval head. And um, there we go. So what else I'm going to do to this is um, I guess people that speak English would have said the other thing I'm going to do to this is um, string it up. Make sure that it has, um, make sure the nut is flat. That's uh, his other one was not, was not playing flat. So I just use my uh, because he uses a steel, you know, for a slide guitar, so I just use my my rocker, uh, fret rocker, and I just go up to the, where are we? Just go up to the, close to the nut and lay it on there and pick the strings. And, uh, you know, the ones that aren't, aren't uh, rattling the, the straight edge uh, are the, are the low ones. So I lower everything down until I get everything, everything rattling the straight edge so that's how I know I'm dead straight uh, on that. Um, let's plug this thing in real quick and tap it make sure we've got some noise. His, uh, his main complaint with this was that it, uh, 
it played. It, you know, it was dead. It didn't have any signal if you if you metered it through the through the pickup. But uh, the main uh, his complaint was that it just wasn't very loud. His other ones were louder. And uh, oddly enough, that even even though there was not continuity through the coil, there was enough magnetism to carry some sound. So, um, but it was very quiet. to tap down here. So that's got a lot more heat than it ever did. And then the volume switch is working and it's uh, or pot and it's working in the right direction. Which is always good. Alright, so that's it. I'm going to screw the pot back on here and uh, string it up and I'll bring you back in when it makes noise. Okay, so we got um, got the strings on, got it relatively in tune. Um, this is just tuned in open G, which is uh, GBD, GBD. GBD, GBD. Um, okay, that's, that's where I usually, yeah, I got my amp set about halfway and I got this full blast. And that seems about right. A humbucker would be louder than that, but it is a single coil, and it's a uh, it's a split single coil, so that it's you know side by side like a like an old bass pickup. Um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off, save my battery on my phone, and so. I, uh, as I mentioned, I just lay the um, the fret rocker, which is rocking right now. It's going to stop here in a second. Um, and I already went through this uh, just, well, I didn't fix anything. I just picked through it to see what was going on. So that high string uh, is not rattling. The B string. <laughs> I'm thinking regular guitar. It is actually a B string in this case, GBD. Um, okay, and then this G string is is what it's riding on. Okay, now if we go we go past the G, the D is not rattling anything. The that is a D. This other B is not rattling anything. Then we get up here to this G. And it's rattling. So basically, right now, I've got both the G strings are high, and this guy likes everything to be f as flat as it can be up here. So I'm just going to grab uh, a couple files here, and pop that string out of there, and we're just going to go for it here. 24 gauge string. I just happen to have a 24 gauge nut file. And I can't tell. Yeah, I'm in my own way again here. So I don't want to take off too much because then I'll be taking them all down and chasing them around. And I really should take this other G string down as well so that we have a better. We're still not getting any contact on those two high strings. Got contact there. Still got contact there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll loosen this a little bit. File that uh, the fat G slot. That might have just been hung up a little bit because we put bigger strings on this one. Uh oh, shoot! I just cracked the nut. Maybe making a new nut for this. Um, all right, so I uh, making a new nut. Now this happens to be made out of cork. I didn't have any bone blanks large enough to take this out of. Uh, and the strings aren't very deep in there yet, so uh, I want to get it in the uh, in the instrument first, and then and then set the strings. Um, but it's pretty pretty cool actually. Um, uh, you can see 
I cut a piece, I have a Corian blank, I cut a piece off the end of the blank and then and then ripped it because they're a half an inch thick. Ripped it so that I could push a length, you know, this long, which is what about five inches, through my sander, the the little uh, orbital spindle sander, uh, oscillating spindle sander. And I can do that with a longer blank. I, I, I do it with nuts, but they tend to want to ride up, and I figured, well, I got plenty, so I'll, I'll do that. And then I'll have enough left over here that I can work that down to an eighth inch blank for, uh, for a fender style. Um, anyway, the cool thing is I was talking to a guy at work. He, I was mixing some paint for him, actually. And he was telling me how he makes uh, cutting boards out of uh, sink cutouts from Corian. And I said, hey, really? Um, you know, and I, I can use that for guitar nuts. If you've got, you know, any little scraps, I don't need big scraps because guitar nuts aren't very big. He goes, uh, yeah, I'll bring you some in. So he brought me in uh, this piece, this little teeny scrap here uh, of Corian. So it's half inch thick and then whatever these dimensions happen to be. It looks like about, there again, five inches by five and a half maybe. Um, you know, by 16 and Another one, not quite as tall, so maybe it's more like five inches, and then uh, by 24. So I basically have a lifetime supply of uh, nut blanks and, uh, and acoustic saddles blanks. Um, and this, I tried using Corian. I wonder if I have any of that. Yeah, I'm not going to dig for that while you're here. Um, so long story short, I tried uh, some uh, Corian that was the speckly type. And it, it's really grainy inside, and it's actually, uh, I considered it difficult to mill. This stuff, I ran it right through my bandsaw, it was no issue whatsoever. It, it cut pretty much like wood. Um, I, you know, hardwood, I had to, you know, you know, press gently. I didn't, I never just jam anything through the saw, though, so. Uh, at any rate, so uh, I was able to, you know, rough cut that and then mill it down, so now, I have a blank that is actually thicker than the old blank. I'll take you over here now. Um, let's see if we can zoom and get back on target. There we go. So we're only talking about maybe 10 thousandths difference, uh, but the old nut blank, you can see how much wobble that has. And uh, so the only thing holding that, and you have all the strings you can see are very high. So you have a lot of torsion pulling that nut over. So I hate to have, it was pretty straight, but it was glued in. So um, this is the new one. I actually made it just a fuzz longer, so it fills the slot lengthwise better. And then when you get it down in the slot, uh, there's, well, it wobbles a little bit, but not, nothing like the old one. It wobbles forward but it's straight up and down when you push it that direction. So anyway, I'll make up that difference with some Elmers or uh, tight bond. I always just call white glue or carpenter glue Elmers for some reason. Never use Elmers, always use tight bond. Um, I say I never do. I'm not saying don't do it. Um, at any rate, so uh, I'm going to glue that in and then I'll be back out here maybe a few minutes tomorrow night just finishing off these uh, slot, slot depths. <laughs> say that fast. Slot depths. I'm going to deepen the slots tomorrow night. And uh, yeah, so, and then once I get this thing, uh, get the net, you know, filed in right on that, I'll, I'll uh, fire it up and get some, some sounds on the pickup. The, um, I think it's going to be good. I don't see why it wouldn't be good. So anyway, all right, I'll bring you back in tomorrow night and uh, we'll check that out. Okay guys, hello, 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 hey. Um, this is the uh, final final little bit on the uh, Supro um, lap steel. Um, so it's a quick recap. Um, had to have the pickup rewound. Uh, John Williams uh, from Guitar Attack Tennessee did that. Um, I rewired the thing inside, replaced uh, well, added the output jack. Uh, normally, they just had a cord sticking out of them that you plug in. Uh, so, put the output jack in. Um, changed uh, the tuners. 
These are, uh, I think these were Goto. I'm not sure. I got these at Stumac. They were just kind of the middle of the road, uh, one piece, you know, kind of vintage tuner. Um, and uh, and then I put a, a Corian nut in there. Uh, chipped the other nut in the process of working on it and uh, just replaced it. So here's a, um, I know I've, I've done this, I've made this, uh, what do you want to call it, disclosure uh, many times. I'm not a steel player. I don't plan to be a guitar player, uh, although I do my way around on those a little better than I do on lap steel. Um, so, I've got the amp at about 50%. Make sure of those that I get ringing out on, you know, all the strings. Cross or you know. <laughs> Sounds like I might have just found out that that was a little low compared to the others. Probably have to take them all down just to fuzz to, to meet that one. Although as soon as you put any pressure on it, it's, it's a good point. So. so this is just a piece of copper pipe. Pro going home. Thanks for watching.